All right, guys, we are here at the 2022 Audio Advice Live event. We're in the RBH room. We're with Mr. Shane Rich. This is the premier room of the whole show. This is the room everybody's talking about. This is where the best of the best, we've got this giant Sony projector. I don't know the model number, but I know if you stand in front of it and you put your hand up, you could potentially lose the skin on your hand. <laughs> That's how bright that projector is. You've got the Trinov processing, and you, of course you've got this, I, I'm familiar with these speakers, Shane. I've seen them before. Yeah, where I think I, you have. Where have I seen them? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We wanted to make you feel right at home here. <laughs> you really did. And, you know, one thing that's really impressive is this is a large space. When I walked in here, I was like, oh, I wonder if this is going to have enough bass. I wonder if it's going to be immersive enough with the, given the acoustical environment. But the way you guys set this system up, you're, you may be a believer about having ear level wide speakers. You've got wide channels here. You've got side channels, back channels. Six speakers in the ceiling at a trade show with, with uh, tray ceiling here. You guys were managed to, you and Audio Vice managed to jerry-rig some speakers in the ceiling. Yeah. Six speakers in the ceiling. And let me tell you guys something. This was an impressive demo. And the thing that, I, that really caught me was, number one, the bass was on point. It was tight. It was focused. It was deep. I did not expect to get that much bass in this room. All you have is these giant speakers up here and one sub in the back, but man, it was like thunderous. When we watched Dune, it made me want to watch the whole movie. Yeah. Like I heard details and immersive. And I guess I'll, the question I have for you is, why did it sound so seamless and fluid in a, in a non-ideal room? What was the magic behind what you guys did here? Yeah, well, um, I will tell you, first of all, I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out either. And so uh, was it luck of the draw? Um, maybe a little bit, but more so it has to do with the active nature of the speaker system and what we're doing uh, with the active crossover. Um, we're using a Trinoff uh, Altitude 32 for integrating all the speakers together and Honestly, the Trinoff unit is just uh, like the holy grail of uh, AV processors and what you can do with that when it comes to loudspeaker management in an active speaker system like this is just practically magic. Well, that's the one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. So when you ran the Trinoff room correction, did you have to go and tweak a lot of it or did it pretty much set the system up the way you wanted and maybe you just had to adjust the base level? Yeah, that's really what it boiled down to. Uh, uh, John from Trinoff was here uh, for the setup and uh, it really didn't take that long to get this room configured from the standpoint of um, you know, crossovers and then uh, the calibration. We only had one uh, point of calibration in the seating area, believe it or not. And it, it, the room just turned out incredibly um, good from an acoustic standpoint. Now, there is some treatment in the room, of course, for high frequencies. If we didn't have these drapes in here, yeah. uh, it would be trouble yeah, because sure. the Trinoff wouldn't have been able to uh, correct or accommodate that type of acoustic environment. As John said earlier in your discussion with him, he can make a gymnasium sound like a really good gymnasium. But it's still, you know, a, gymnasium. But it's still a gymnasium. <laughs> so we do have some treatment in here that factors in, uh, but uh, when it comes again to integrating things seamlessly, um, that Trinoff just does a great job and, and it doesn't, really didn't take long. It was just, a simple uh, measurement around the room with the speakers and it went through its calibration process and then from that point <clears throat> we did adjust the levels so we we're shooting for a specific target target curve and then after that uh, just a little bit of uh, uh, changing of levels and the subs and and it was all together at that point. So it was not difficult. I've spent hours and hours and hours in somebody's room. <laughs> <clears throat> you know More who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I still, I still spend hours and hours on that time. Yeah. No, it was, it was a great demo. And of course the video was spectacular with the Sony projector and, and just everything we watched here, we were watching concert 
clips. We even watched a Trinov demo, which I'd like to get a hold of. That Trinov demo was really impressive. Yeah, the sound yeah it demo. really is. Yeah, it's just, you know, I, I have known and been associated with what Trinov has been doing from the very get-go when they first came into the consumer uh, market division, uh, you know, area, and I, I was really impressed with their product from the get-go. Uh, this was, you know, ten years ago or so, and uh, and now the processor uh, that they're uh, doing, and and I've been, gosh, uh, Brian who is here with us, uh, we did his system earlier this year. Their new product, the Altitude 32 and the 48, and we're doing some other jobs, as you know, with those mm -hmm. processors. Um, you, you just can't beat it in terms of um, what you might need to do to get the very best integration between all of your speakers in an environment that's either a real difficult acoustic environment or an ideal acoustic environment. Either way, you're going to get the very best sound possible. And with a speaker system this complex, the fact that you're doing all the active crossover management within the Trinoff, mm -hmm. correct? You're not using yes. an external DSP. You're actually that's doing correct. all the DSP management in the Trinoff processor. Yeah. Simplifies the setup and it actually in some ways makes it even better. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. I mean, we have uh, a DSP unit, which you have in your system at home, uh, that can do some something somewhat similar to what is happening uh, in terms of integrating the speaker components together, uh, the active crossover, and, and doing some FIR filter uh, compensation or correction for the speaker itself. Uh, the Trinoff is a little more adept to actually um, helping with the room acoustics, not just speaker correction, but room correction. Right, right. So Shane, we've got these awesome RBH sound active speakers in here with the Trinov processing, the Sony projector. I don't even know what screen we're looking at. Stewart, Stewart. Stewart screen, incredible. But what's powering it? How are you getting the incredible dynamics that we're hearing, the clean output? What amplifiers are you using? So we are using our new line of an unrivaled amplifiers. And uh, in this system specifically, we have, uh, well, you know this very well because it's essentially the same power that's going to your speakers in your, uh, in your theater room. Mm -hmm. So we've got 1500 watts per subwoofer, and that is bottom subwoofer and top subwoofer, and then 500 watts of power for the mid-range and 250 for the tweeter. Um, so, you know, an active system really is different in how the power is delivered to the speaker system versus a passive system. Uh, the active system, you don't have the losses that you traditionally would have with a passive crossover, those parasitic losses, uh, phase shifts, that kind of thing. And so the amplifiers, the full damping factor of the amplifiers is is uh, being enacted upon each individual driver component. Mm -hmm. And um, you have more dynamic range because of that. Uh, transient response is better. Um, yeah, so that really does factor in, in an active speaker system like this. And then the nice thing about your amp system is it's a very high efficient class D. Yes. So it runs cool. You could put a couple of these in a rack and not have to worry about it being a space heater. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, excellent. Um, we will be doing a bench test on this amplifier one of these days, so <laughs> stay tuned. But I can tell you guys that these amplifiers sound great. and. You should have a dedicated 20 amp line running them because I've tripped breakers on these amps when the bass hits. So make sure you have enough power to provide to the amplifiers because they will use it. Well, it was a great demo. And guys, if you're contemplating on adding wide channels, let me tell you something. This is a great case study here with the wide channels that really created such an expansive sound field in Atmos um, movies. It was very impressive and to the point where I'm actually going to be adding wide channels to my system. Luckily, I pre-wired for it. So if you're building a new house and you're pre-wiring for a home theater, pre-wire for wide speakers. Trust me, you're gonna eventually wanna use them. 
So guys, I appreciate everything you did in this room with this demo. Again, this is the state of the art stuff. We got the Sony projector, we got the Trinov Electronics, RBH sound. You could read my review of these speakers on our editorial site, as well as watch our YouTube video. I'll link it up in the description below. And guys, don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.